and welcome back to the Life License Qualification Program video series presented by Business Career College Corporation. Again, my name is Jason Watt and what we're going to look at in this set of videos will be the benefits offered within group insurance contracts. At this point, you've seen an introduction to group insurance, you've seen how group insurance premiums are calculated, and you should understand the funding options for group insurance. We're going to spend the next few minutes talking about the various types of benefits offered within group insurance plans. Now in reality there are a great variety of options for some sort of group coverage for employees or for union members or for association members, but we're going to be concerned here specifically with life insurance benefits. So, or with benefits related to life insurance products more accurately. We'll first look at the most obvious, I guess, which is group life insurance. Now group life insurance within a group insurance contract works in a very similar manner to what you would know as a one year renewable term contract. Basically, when we're calculating the premiums for the group life insurance portion of the plan, we look at the mortality of each plan member and we calculate premiums accordingly. Next year, every plan member will be a year older. It's probably safe to assume the premiums will go up a little bit. So this is just a very simple one-year renewable term group contract. As with most forms of term insurance, it is only going to cover somebody up until a certain age. It might be 65 or it might be 70, it depends. But the idea here is it's really just term insurance. Now the amount of coverage can vary. We can see a fairly common set of calculations would be something like one times, two times, three times salary. I've seen larger benefits, but these are fairly common. You'll see uh, sometimes in an executive class or a class of professionals, five or seven or ten times salary. But for most folks, they can count on having a benefit that's something like one or two or three times salary. It's not the only thing you'll see, though. You might see a dollar amount, maybe $50,000 per employee or maybe $100,000 per employee. something like that. Now as mentioned in the introduction to group insurance, there's not going to be any underwriting involved in getting this amount of life insurance. The only thing you're going to have to do is to be actively at work. That is to actually have met the probationary period for your group insurance plan, done the appropriate paperwork, and then to show up at work that day. Probationary periods, by the way, can vary, but 90 days is fairly common. Some groups have no probationary period at all. Some groups you might have to wait as long as six months. So we can have this $50,000, $100,000 of insurance, maybe one or two or three times salary. It will be up to some non-evidence maximum. It's fairly common with group insurance to find a limit to how much you'll be able to get without underwriting, what we call the non-evidence maximum. And then, if you want to exceed that non-evidence maximum, if you want more insurance than that, the insurance company is going to say, we may do that for you, but we have to have a better understanding of the risk. We're going to ask you to go and get some underwriting done. You'll see the same concept come up again when we talk about disability insurance later on, that there will be an amount of insurance we're going to put in place without any evidence of insurability, but if you want to exceed that amount, that's where we have to get into a non-evidence maximum. So you might be able to go over this, but only with some underwriting. Now, it's not only going to be the plan member who's going to be insured here. It's almost always the case that we also have some dependent life insurance. 
you would see quite often the spouse covered for five or ten thousand dollars. Those are fairly common amounts. And you would also quite frequently see the kids covered for maybe twenty-five hundred dollars or maybe five thousand dollars per child. So it gives a little bit of coverage, not a whole lot, but a little bit of coverage for the dependents. Now, we have to be careful here. With group insurance, you'll quite often hear people say, I have enough insurance, I have group insurance through my employer. Well, that might be true as far as their health care is concerned, maybe as far as their disability is concerned, but with life insurance, people are often led to believe or lead themselves to believe that this is going to be enough insurance when in fact you've done the needs analysis now back in module 8 you know that for somebody who makes a hundred thousand dollars a year if they have a two times salary benefit of two hundred thousand dollars that's only likely to last their surviving spouse a couple of years if they're serious about looking after their loved ones on their death then they should look at this scenario and recognize you know what that's not really enough insurance for me this can be a challenge for folks in this industry, but at the same time, once somebody has this insurance in place, well, they're already spending some dollars on life insurance. It shouldn't be as much of a challenge now to at least get them used to the idea that, you know what, your family does need you to have some life insurance. Now, a couple of other things to look at with group life insurance. Group life insurance, like individual life insurance, tends not to have any exclusions. You'll sometimes find group life insurance issued with a suicide exclusion, but lots of group life insurance plans are issued with no suicide exclusion in place. Because there's no underwriting, we don't really have the opportunity to throw a claim out based on fraud even. So it's even less common with group life insurance for there to be no claim paid than it is with individual life insurance. Something else to watch for with group life insurance is something where you can really earn your keep as an agent, something you can do that may not bring you any business directly, but really shows that you're acting in the best interests of your client, is to look for the conversion privilege. Group life insurance contracts nearly always have a conversion privilege built in. The conversion privilege normally allows you to, within 30 days of your departure from your employer, take this group coverage and convert it into individual coverage. And as with the conversions we looked at back in module eight, that means a conversion without medical evidence. So it's fairly attractive, especially if you have somebody who's got a tough time getting individual life insurance. They should be well aware of their conversion options and they should take the opportunity to convert when they leave their employer. That conversion privilege tends to have some limitations though, like I said, this is term insurance and if you've got somebody who's 55 or 60 and leaving an employer, then their conversion options are going to be a lot more limited than somebody who's say 35 or 40. But when you have that client who's declined in the underwriting process, can't get insurance, your responsibility as an agent is to help that client manage their risk. One of the things you can do is make sure they're aware of their conversion option and that they do exercise that conversion option if they ever leave their employer. And it doesn't have to be by the way, a, a willful departure. If they're fired, they still have the conversion option. If they're laid off, they still have the conversion option. That's really it for group life insurance. With your knowledge from module eight of individual life insurance, it shouldn't be much of a stretch to incorporate group life insurance. Group life insurance benefits, by the way, are virtually always paid out as a lump sum in today's plans. At one time, it was fairly common to see a survivor income benefit, and that survivor income benefit would have typically done something like pay your survivors two years of your salary upon your death. You will still find those occasionally. Um, in Canada, um, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the military are notable for having those types of benefits, but not, not a lot of group insurance contracts feature that type of payout option today.